Hey, we're back with another episode of Before You Buy, the show where we give you some straight up gameplay and our first impressions of the latest games releasing. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today we got one that's been a long time in the making. I am talking about Sons of the Forest. So, it's been a decade. 2013's The Forest uh, was, I, I mean, pretty groundbreaking in terms of survival sims. And now it's been a decade. This has been an incredibly anticipated sequel. High expectations. I mean, the first game's combination of survival, like straight-ass survival game with horror, made it one of the most tense and interesting games of the genre. So this sequel has a whole lot to live up to. So the big question we're asking today, does this game manage to improve on everything that made the first game so great and memorable. So uh, there's not gonna be any spoilers here, but I'm just gonna answer that right here, and then I'm gonna tell you why. Uh, yes, absolutely. I I'm not mincing any words on this. If you like the original game, you're gonna like this one. It's an improvement in pretty much every way. So this time, instead of being a father searching for his missing child after a freak plane crash, you're a member of a search and rescue team looking for billionaire Edward Pufton, CEO of, yes, it is seriously called this, Puff Corp. Our British friends will certainly get a kick out of that. Goofy names aside, the rescue operation immediately goes sideways, and now you're stranded on an island filled with not-so-friendly locals. So right off the bat, probably one of the most striking things about Sons of the Forest is the visuals. They're a massive improvement over the first game, which always looked and felt kind of janky, even when it came out in 2013. I know that was a decade ago, but although it looked good, it had its weirdness. And that persisted even after it was out of early access. Obviously, it was functional, but attempts at immersion didn't always work, and sometimes it came off as a little silly. Um, Sons of the Forest, not, not, not like that. It absolutely works. The island setting is probably one of the most beautifully rendered forests I have ever seen. Almost every moment wandering around this gigantic deserted island just seems screenshot worthy. Uh, the addition of seasons makes the island even more beautiful. And even, the, I will say they're ridiculously accelerated, like it takes a week for the island to switch seasons. That's not really a detriment though. Autumn and winter are just really striking, beautiful changes. And they do keep things interesting. There's different stuff in the environment in different seasons. Technically, this is an early access game, but it's one of the most complete early access games I've ever seen. Uh, I experienced almost no bugs other than one bizarre one that inverted the draw distance. But other than that, uh, which was easy to fix, might I add, I have seen nothing else. Uh, obviously, that doesn't mean this stuff doesn't exist, but my experience has been very bug-free and, you know, big new game. That's, uh, that's weird. Surprising, let's say. I also experienced a little slight stuttering when playing the game for the first time. Probably shader caching. Got a fun little topic video that talks about that a little bit coming soon. But that stopped after about a half hour, so... I mean, is it great? No, but that could be a lot worse. If you've played the first game, basic gameplay is pretty much what you come to expect. You scrounge for supplies, build a shelter, start a fire, hunt for food. You gotta eat, drink, and sleep to keep your guy healthy, uh, which thankfully you don't have to be doing all the time, at least on normal. So you don't have to think about it constantly. Like, there's other things to do in the game that the game wants you to focus on, and that's a good thing. Like, usually you're topping up once a day or so it's pretty manageable it doesn't get too annoying obviously it's a survival game so these mechanics exist in it but while some games in the genre can make those things very intrusive this game does a very good job of making it so that while it's obligatory it lends itself to the game rather than detracts from it all that sounds basically the same as the first game but how crafting and construction work is actually really different this is the part that probably is going to take getting used to for people who expect the first forest. Because building isn't just recipe based anymore. A lot of the stuff you're constructing has to be built by hand, like piece by piece. That means if you want to build a log house, you got to cut down logs, stack them up one by one, then cut the logs to make the doors and the floorboards. If you want to make a fire, you got to grab some sticks, break them, set them on fire. And if you want to reinforce the fire, you got to get some rocks and put them in a circle around it. On simple builds like the fires I just mentioned, it's incredibly intuitive. Building your first shelter, it just makes sense. You throw it on a tarp, prop up two sides with some sticks, you're done. But when you start getting into more complex stuff like roofs and supports, it does get a little more confusing. I eventually managed to figure everything out, and the guidebook's helpful illustrations do help a little, but the game's refusal to tutorialize is gonna leave a few new players lost and confused, and, you know, it's very easy to be annoyed by tutorials, and a lot of the time 
time, yes, they are very much excessive. But here, I do feel like it went a little bit too far in the other direction. Uh, but at the same time, it is also part of the intrigue of the game, like trying to figure out what you're supposed to do to survive. So it's not something I want to entirely detract from it. It's just in real life, putting something on top of something else is not something that you need to figure out the controls for. For people who find that stuff stressful though, the game does include some settings that allows you to customize some things and even has a built-in peaceful mode for people who really just wanna play a survival game. So if you don't wanna deal with combat or the horror elements, there you go. Now, if you're playing solo, there is one game changer additionally. Uh, you actually have an ally. Uh, this guy gets his earlobes blown out at the start of the game. So in order to give him orders, you have to write out a sequence on a notepad using a series of keywords. He can follow you. He'll build things for you. And he'll do some of the more tedious tasks around your base, like collect logs. As far as I can tell, he doesn't really need anything from you other than a periodic break that he's automatically going to take sometimes. Um, enemies don't really react much to his presence and he doesn't follow you into caves so it's not like he's going to help defend you but he also does take away a lot of the tedium of base building i'm going to say i think every survival game needs something like this in the future it makes the stuff that's less fun uh easier faster so if you want to automate cutting down trees and making clearings that's something you can do now but one of the coolest things about the first game was how it seemed like a standard survival game at first but as you explored the whole experience became more more and more horrific. This time around, they don't waste any time with creepy stuff. It's possible for players to wander into a nearby cave at the very start of the game, and you get a face full of nightmare fuel. Uh, the game can be terrifying when it wants to be. Uh, anytime you're in a cave or wandering around the island at night, the tension's just through the roof. Don't even think about setting up camp in enemy territory without some way to defend yourself. Like, having to deal with enemies lit by a single fire is freaky as hell. Uh, another one of the best things about the original game is how the AI could react to dynamically to your presence and this game does such a great job expanding on that uh, there's an entire society of cannibals on this island and at first they acknowledge your presence with a little cautious interest as you're wandering around you might run into one staring at you from a distance or they might slowly start approaching you before backing off uh, the interesting thing about these first encounters is they're not just brainless monsters that attack they're cautious and not exactly predictable at first you can scare them away by just threatening them with a weapon and the anime really drive home the way they watch you. Uh, they run around, they climb trees, they climb rocks, they stare at you. It's all impressive animation work, and combined with the frankly good AI, it makes the encounters with the natives very tense and interesting. Like, the way that these guys react to your presence is just cool. Like, this one amazing situation I stumbled onto in one of their camps, most of them kept their distance, but one guy decided to be tough and try to attack me, so I took him out. So this really big dude walked over, picked up the dead guy, looked at him, and tossed his body to the side like a rag doll, and then strolled over to me like he was looking for a fight. I, that's just really cool AI stuff. Y you don't see stuff like that in games anymore. They kind of just stopped caring about these, you know, interesting human behaviors and really started caring more about crafting opponents rather than scenes, you know? And this game just leans right the hell into that. Uh, if you do enough to antagonize the locals, they eventually start sniffing around your base. At first, it's just a few guys in the distance, but eventually they're conducting full-on sieges and the in intensity of their attacks only gets worse as the game goes on. In general, Sons of the Forest is a faster game than the original. It reveals its mysteries more consistently than the first game, uh, almost in a manner that reminded me of Subnautica, where the game is kind of always throwing something new and exciting at you. I mean, it doesn't take too long before you discover at least one secret underground facility, uh, and it took the entire first game to find something like that. And this game gets scary. Like, some of the best materials and items can only be found exploring caves, and that's where the island's most grotesque monsters reside. Like, if you thought stuff in the original game was disgusting, you really haven't seen anything yet. Uh, they managed to top themselves with a lot of this. Right from the start, the game's throwing weird stuff stuff at you like this mysterious mutant who will sometimes wander near your camp i don't want to spoil too many of the secrets here but i found the slow reveal of things very very satisfying overall i, I also found the whole gameplay loop pretty addictive actually i was respected the first game but i didn't put a lot of time into it i liked it it's one of those games that i i think was really enjoyable but it was one that i more returned to and progressed at my leisure uh, with sons of the forest i really 
didn't want to stop playing. I don't know if it's the bigger emphasis on story, the visuals, which are, by the way, just beautiful. But once I started playing, I was hooked. And I know that you know I'm not too huge on survival games. I don't really talk a whole lot about them. Jake more regularly covers that content because it's more his thing than me. But this one really got my attention and would not let go. Uh, that's not to say the game is perfect, of course. It's still in early access, so it's not an actually a complete game. Um, in terms of crafting, there's not actually that much stuff to make at the moment. And progression is kind of flat. Most of the important tools you'll get aren't actually made either. You'll just find them somewhere and that can sometimes lead to problems where you need a specific tool to continue the story but you have no idea where it is so you're just kind of wandering around aimlessly hoping you come across it and for a game about survival your guy really doesn't seem that interested in using all the tools available to him you can find all kinds of useful things like buckets and body armor and your guy just refuses to pick it up Certain crafting requirements also can be confusing as well, especially when it comes to different sizes and shapes of logs. Logs are, I have a feeling, something they're going to be uh, doing a lot of improving upon. Building also has the same problem almost every other survival game does. Trying to line things up just right so the wall or floor will actually go in can be frustrating, uh, and it's especially bad in this game where every single piece has to be placed by hand. I do hope they tighten this stuff up while they're in early access and not once they go to the final version of the game. Uh, still, these are minor issues. If you're at all interested in survival games as a genre, it's easy to recommend Sons of the Forest. Uh, if you're coming to this one directly after the first, some of the crafting might feel a little awkward and the build options a little limited, but the exploration and enemy AI and animations, uh, it's way better. Honestly, just some of the best out there. You're not going to find a lot better if you go looking for it. And like I said, survival game is not really my jam, and I'm still way into this one. So even if you're not that interested in survival games as a genre, I still think I'd recommend checking this one out. It's a solid, good, enjoyable survival game and a terrifying horror game at the same time. And at only 30 bucks, it's so easy to recommend. Uh, you might want to wait for the full release to get all the small issues worked out, but for me, there's been almost none of the usual early access jank that you expect for something on this scale. The eight player multiplayer is probably a lot buggier. I'm not going to lie. So if you're for multiplayer stuff, it may be an issue. But as a solo player, this is, I mean, this is top tier in terms of early access. And that's all for today. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription. So click subscribe. Don't forget to enable all notifications. And as always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at FalconTheHero. And we'll see you next time right here on GameRanks.